Hello everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and welcome to GTA Fact Finding Episode 6 where I'm going to be talking about how to go faster in GTA. That is, how to make you go faster, how to make your vehicle go faster and just generally explain a few tips and tricks that some of the top guys know to help improve your performances in races and just driving around in general. So first of all, buy all of the performance upgrades. Now what do I mean by performance upgrades? Well, the things that you need to add to your car to maximize the performance of it are brakes, engine, transmission, turbo, and a spoiler if it's available. Those are the only things that you need. Now, brakes obviously help you stop quicker. Uh, engine, transmission, and turbo increase acceleration and top speed. If you want to know more about that and show where I prove it, you can check episode 5 of this series, which is called Top Speed Exposed, where I do show that they increase both top speed and acceleration. And a spoiler as well, which makes you, which increases your traction in the corners and allows you to go around corners quicker. Now there is a slight bug with spoilers, so when you choose the first option in the spoilers list, it doesn't apply the uh, apply the traction increase. So some people do get confused when there's a car with only one spoiler option. It doesn't show that traction increase when you hover over it, but it will when you actually apply it. Uh, you need to have a spoiler on and any spoiler gives the exact same amount of traction. So just put any spoiler on and if there's only one, you need to have that on. Another point to note is that you need to put all of those performance upgrades on. So even if your acceleration bar in Los Santos Customs is completely maxed out through only putting the engine and the transmission on, for example, you need to add that turbo as well. It will still give you extra performance. If you want to see where I prove that, check the fourth episode of this series called The Truth About Vehicle Stats, where you'll see a lot more information about that sort of thing. Now, something else that you may want to get is off-road wheels. Off-road wheels actually help or going over bumps and uh, curbs and all that kind of stuff. They, they make that a much smoother transition. So again, if you want to know where, see where I prove that and actually explain that in more detail, check the, uh, the, the video down below called Off-Road Wheels and why you need them. I'll also put the link on the screen. All of this I've already covered, that's why I'm leaving these links. But yeah, you, you do need off-road wheels if you do want the smoothest experience when racing. So yeah, th those are normally worth putting on. Obviously some cars react differently to off-road wheels, some cars get more benefit than others, but uh, yeah, that they are worth having. Now everything else doesn't matter, whether it's suspension, whether it's different types of armor, the different weights of armor, you know, carbon parts, non-carbon body modifications, nothing else matters. If you can put anything on that you want or leave anything off that you want and you won't get any different performance of your car. You only need those five main things plus off-road wheels and your car will be all ready to go as this one is here. So next up is racing lines. Now, if you don't think there's any kind of difference between taking a corner like this and taking a corner like this or you think the first one was better then you need to watch this video this comparison to see the difference as you can see on the right hand side it's the, the more smooth version it is a lot quicker just on that small clip now racing lines are the basis for quick times on any track and ju just generally doing well now the comparison that you're seeing on the screen here is between someone what I've considered to be standard GTA someone who can actually get around the track you know uses brakes but doesn't have a clue about racing lines you know just goes around the track in any way that is uh, the, the, the best way that he thinks it's possible and the guy on the right is actually using some racing lines as you can see he's created such a huge gap already and we're only a small amount into the lap now if you recognize any part of your driving on the left you need to watch this video multiple times check what the guy on the right is doing differently to the guy on the left he's basically being able to carry a lot more speed and a lot more momentum through those corners so yeah it, it's it's such a world apart and you need to have those basics down of a racing line where to brake where to accelerate the best way to get around a corner if you want to be quick all of the things that I'm about to talk about in this video will not help you improve whatsoever unless you are able to know the basics of racing lines like this I'm not going to explain it in this video because I've already done it I've already got a series called The Racing School and all of the stuff in there 
can easily be applied to GTA. So again, you can click the link just there or click the link in the description that will take you to the playlist where if you are actually serious about improving your performances in races in GTA or just in general, you need to watch that. It will explain it all very easily for you. So let's get into a few more advanced things, assuming that you know that kind of stuff. Now, a quick note about motorbikes, because a lot of people, I think, still are confused about this. It is always quicker to wheelie with a motorbike. In the bottom left, we've got the wheelie. In the top left is just normal, and top right is actually leaning forward. What you'll see is that leaning forward does give you a little boost, but over the course of this 45 second, uh, 45 second straight, it really doesn't help you that much. You know, it only improves your your time a small amount. Whereas wheeling, as, as you can see in the bottom left, it absolutely decimates everything, as you can see here. Now, some bikes do benefit from wheeling more than others, such as the Barty, for example, is very, very good at wheeling. Um, but it's whatever bike you have, it's always quicker to get that front wheel up than it is to lean forward. Obviously, you can lean forward in the corners as well, but really, the, the amount of speed advantage that you're going to get from that is negligible. So really there's not a lot of point in doing that. As you can see, the, the wheelie has already finished, whereas the other two are lagging way behind. So yeah, if you if you are racing with motorbikes, basically motorbike races become a case of who can wheelie the most, because that's where all of your speed is going to come from. Next up, the next thing that, to talk about is back to the cars with curb boosting. So if you were in a race and you saw someone take this corner, for example, this is the final corner of LSGP, uh, Los Santos Grand Prix, from the hairpin, you would imagine that this is the way to take it. You know, you've got a straight, you've got a corner, and then you've got another straight. You know, that that's pretty much bog standard. The the racing line around the corner, pretty easy. You know, not really going off offline or anything like that. That's pretty much how you would expect a normal person to take it. Now, if you saw someone in a race doing what this guy's doing right here, you know, going off on the pavement all the time, run, you know, he's he's out, totally out of control. He's going over to the left on the straight you know what what's this guy doing he's, he's all over the place it just doesn't look very good racing at all but how about we compare them now the guy on the left is the normal the guy on the right is the, the guy who's all over the place you know not really uh, not really looking like he's got any control over the car whatsoever but as you're probably already seeing the guy on the right is much much quicker he's already completed that jump and he completes this short 20, 20 or so second uh, section one whole second quicker just in that little section. Now the reason for that is what's called curb boosting. Now obviously I've spelled it with K-E-R-B, that's a UK phrase. Obviously in America I think it's C-U-R-B, but however you decide to spell it, I know people would mention it in the comments, that's why I mentioned it now. Um, the, the idea is that any kind of bump or curb or anything like that in GTA Online will give your car a rev boost, which increases the speed that it has. It's more potent in terms of acceleration than it is in top speed, but it's there for every single car. Now, some of the slower cars that you're seeing here, you can notice it a lot more and you can do it a lot more as well because you have more time to react. As you can see, you know, just going and trying to hunt for the curbs at all points any kind of bump in the road really it should be called bump boosting but it's called curb boosting because people you know when, when the tracks aren't designed to stop it which is something that the racing community tries to do as much as it can with the, the proper usage that we have you get people just basically curb surfing you know going up on the curbs all of the time um going onto the the sidewalk of of races to get any little boost that they can Obviously, it's easier in slower cars because you've got more time to do it, but it is prominent in all forms of racing on GTA. Now, the some cars get more of a boost from it than others. You know, the Jester, for example, is one car that really does get a good boost from it, and any little curb will really help it, whereas the Massacro is one that doesn't really get any benefit from it. So... It, it, it does vary depending on the car, but it will help all cars uh, you know, at, at some stage. Now, I need to let you guys know that doing this without knowing the racing lines that I've mentioned before, without putting all the performance upgrades on, it's not going to help you improve. You know, The, the difference that you're going to get in terms of lap time isn't that great unless you are already at a very high level 
in terms of racing and no racing lines and, and are pretty quick already but when it does get to that point you do need to be searching for those curbs on races that allow it now this is something that the racing community doesn't really like you know it, it does cause people to just change their racing lines to hunt for curbs and and hunt for any kind of bump and it, it kind of makes it a little bit of a farce when it comes to realism this is something that was in gta 4 as well it, it's just yeah something that we would rather see the curb boosting completely removed from the game and we do try to create tracks that don't allow it as much as pos as much as you know open tracks such as the rockstar tracks for example but you can't eradicate it completely so you do have to take advantage of it when you can now next up we're going to be talking about the mid drive speed boost this is the basically the correct name for it you might know it as the cl double clutch method so listen to the engine as this goes on So that is basically the sound of the normal engine for the Banshee there. As it goes up through the gears, that's what you would expect to hear not doing anything. Now listen to the difference this time. That was the important point. Did you hear that where the revs really kicked in and, and you got a little bit of a speed boost there? That's what's called the mid-drive speed boost. I don't know where the name double clutching came in because it's completely not anything to do with double clutching in real life. It's a terrible, terrible name for it. Mid-drive speed boost is the more accurate term for it and that's what I'm going to be calling it from here on out. So as you can see, this is the difference. This is the comparison between just going off the start line normally and using this mid-drive speed boost as you can see here. Now, to be honest, there isn't that much of a difference. The, the, it, it's more important at the very start uh, at low speed so it, it will make a big difference if you're doing you know very short drag races in free roam with your friends but it, it doesn't really give you that much as you see by the end of this it only gives you half a second of an advantage by the end of this long straight so that's not really a lot and its use in races is slightly limited as I'm going to mention but it, it, it does help and, and again you have to be a potent racer already to get any benefit out of it now some cars do benefit from it more than others and you can only do it with rear wheel drive cars as well but it will it will help you in some cars to make them just a little bit quicker so here's an example of exactly what's happening if you focus on the revs on the right hand side the rev counter this is just a normal normally going up the gears as you can see the rev counter goes up then you change gear it goes down a little bit then goes back up again and then we change gear again it goes down that is normal that's what you expect to see very very controlled very standard that that's you know just, just focusing on the rev counter there now this is when we do the mid drive speed boost as you can see we just before we go into second gear we do hit the handbrake and the revs just completely glitch out and just go mental so that's where you get the extra speed from i'm going to show it again you'll see the red light come on for the hand hitting the handbrake and the revs just completely go crazy and that's what gives you that extra speed boost the banshee is one of the most potent vehicles for it it really will do it you know give it a bit a nice boost some cars uh, most other cars don't get it quite as, as big as this but um this time focus on the speedo on the left you'll see how quickly the speedo increases when we do this mid drive speed boost you know it just absolutely tears it apart and you, you can compare it to the the previous shot doing it normally as well so how do you do this well basically you hit the handbrake just before you go into second gear so you come off the accelerator hit the handbrake normally it, it would be on uh, r1 but i've set it to x you know it's easier to set it to x to do that you just hit the handbrake and it just glitches out the revs when you put the accelerator back on you do have to time it right you do have to put a bit put a bit of practice into it there are many videos out there on how to do it it, 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 it you probably have to search for double clutching to be honest because that's what most videos are called but it is a terrible term for it now its usefulness in races isn't all that much the only time you really get use of it is something like there such as you know the, the hairpins on olympic gp that's where you're going to get the most use out of it or if you have an accident and you want to get up to speed really quickly or as i said in sort of short drag races in free roam hairpins like that where you're going around it at slow speed that's where you're going to get a lot of use out of it but otherwise it isn't really that useful for racing 
only in moments like that and only if you've got a car that can actually do it and you've put the practice in to time it right as well so the as i said before you know the racing line will always be better always focus on improving your skills in that way before you go to any methods like this now at the very very end of the scale is fine tuning your car this is where we get into the whole idea of placebo effects and we're not sure this the sort of things here are impossible to prove really now one of the things that we've we've seen or you know a few people at the very top of the game have seen is different spoilers giving different effects to the car now not in terms of changing the overall traction the traction remains the same and you can get the same lap times from both kinds of spoilers for example but it may give you a different feel of the car to suit your driving style a little bit more now again this is at the very very top level this is if you've if you're going for world record lap times and you've perfected everything else if you can't get a 50 point zero 50 point something second lap time on the regular cutting coroners in a supercar then you're not ready to be th thinking about anything like this but you know different different tires different wheels giving a different feel to the car in terms of going over bumps making it maybe a little bit more responsive to the way that you drive different spoilers doing the same sort of thing none of it is really 100 percent testable or provable but it's the sort of thing that you may want to look at even if it's just a placebo effect and you know you're imagining in a change if it makes you go quicker then you've got to have it you know you're going to have people who are adamant that this sort of thing works there are also people that are adamant that it doesn't and every single way in between as well it's all about fine tuning for your own personal driving style if there is a difference it's not going to make a massive difference in lap time but it might just help make you a little bit more consistent as a racer at the very top level so finally if you really really do want to go faster on gta you'd need to get the pc version this is it, it's been sort of found that the pc version does have slightly quicker lap times than the console versions now this is a frame rate issue you know it's nothing to do with the difference in performance of the cars all of the cars are exactly the same and all of the testing that i've done for example is goes you know is is valid for pc as well it's just that the the frame rate of pc means that any kind of frame drop that you get in a race doesn't affect your lap time as much as what it does on the consoles it, it's you know there's a lot of complex things going into it but pc uh pc lap times at the very top level aren't really comparable with console lap times because they are a little bit quicker i'll leave a link in the description to a video that kind of explains that a little bit more so i hope you've enjoyed this video guys it's uh it, i've tried to cover everything in one video you know i don't like making tons of videos with lots of different things in just this is one place where you can go to hopefully know everything that you need to do to improve your racing on gta the main important parts are having the performance upgrades initially and having uh having good racing lines and racing skills again all of the videos that you need to have a look at and for you know for more explanation are in the description look in the description that's the place where everything is there for more explanation on all of the things that i've talked about in this video um, and and racing lines really are key there's no point in curb boosting because you're going to cause a lot of trouble for yourself unless if, if you can't do racing lines anyway there's no point in practicing a mid-drive speed boost because it really doesn't give you that much benefit in a race it's only really in certain situations with certain cars so i hope i've included included everything there i hope this video has helped you in some way from the the guys who are new to the racing on gta to the guys who are, are really you know high level let me know down below all your thoughts if it's helped as well if it did help leave a like you know be sure to subscribe for more videos like this the fact finding series has returned and will continue like this as well Thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate your support as always. And I'll see you next time.